Hey there folks, Luke here with the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you are all doing well. Today it is time to review the Hot Ash Stove. Now with this stove, there's two things that I want to do with it. One, I want to put a quarter in it because it looks like an arcade game, right? Or, you guys remember the old cell phones? They look just like this. Hello? Hello? <laughs> uh, uh, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Anyways, folks, today I am reviewing the Hot Ash Wood Burning Stove. Go ahead and get comfortable. Let's take a look at it now. Now, if you purchase the Hot Ash Stove, it will show up in a box just like this. Very interesting packaging. Comes with all sorts of information about the company. Fits in there nice and snug. It does come with this cotton bag, and that will keep the rest of your gear clean when you have this inside of your backpack. Hot ash. The stove to fuel a lifetime. It sounds like this company has taken a lot of time, a lot of effort, and they have put a lot of thought into this product. Now, to just jump straight into it, I have to say that I am not a fan of this stove. I admire their passion, but this stove, to me, it just is not a winner. So, with that being said, why don't we take a look at the stove. I already have it set up, but I'll break it down and show you guys how it it comes apart and then goes back together. And then we'll fire it up, we'll boil some water, have some coffee, and essentially get to the review. So folks, here's the stove itself. It really does look like an old arcade game, don't it? <laughs> or that's what I think of when I see it, or maybe the cell phone, right? As you can see here, flip it over, has legs on the back, has a single leg here on the front, and you have a wing nut right here, and you have a wing nut right here. So I will start by taking this thing apart. Legs come off. The stack comes off. And then the front chute. And there's the body. From there, you can take the legs, stick them inside. You can put the chute in there. Then you can take that and slide the entire thing together. Then you can take a wing nut. You can screw it in and you can also put the other one down here at the bottom. Right? So let's put it back together, shall we? You put the body together. Then you take the legs for the back. You put that in. You take a wing nut. You secure the entire thing together. When it comes to the legs, make sure that you have them down below the metal here on the sides or it will be lopsided once you get it all together. Now you put on the chute, very simply. Take a wing nut, secure that. Let's see. Okay, you take the pot stand support. And just like that, you are ready to go. Now with this stove here, you feed it essentially from the ramp, from the chute here through the body, and all of the fire, the heat rises through the chimney. Now the fact that you have to feed this thing through here makes it a little bit complicated when it comes to lighting, as you will see here in just a minute. You essentially have to take the stove and tilt it over. Take your lighter and go in like this. Okay, we have some life there. We have some smoke coming out of the top. The heat is being pulled through the body and up out of the chimney. Now you can only hold on to this and do this for a short period of time because this stainless steel body will get very, very hot very quickly. This stove is not the easiest to get going because of this very limited design here. Okay, attempt number two.
Now, as you guys can see there, this thing is having a hard time getting going. Somewhat damp materials, but also the design of the stove makes this difficult to really get going quickly. Uh, you know, the easiest way to go is to have an accelerant, maybe some trioxane, maybe like a cotton ball and some Vaseline, something that can burn for a while that can get the entire thing going. So I'm going to take some, some of the paper, some of the packaging here, and I'm going to burn it. <laughs> that will help. You have to be very careful when feeding this thing because the entire system can become very, very hot. Okay, so the fire's traveled all the way through the tunnel. It's now coming up through the chimney here. What I need now is some good coals inside of this so it can essentially run well, well enough to get some water boiling for my coffee. Now take a look at this folks. You can see here how you have this material burning, the heat is being pulled through the body and then up the chimney. When it comes to the stats for this stove, when it is collapsed you are looking at three inches wide. It is three and a quarter inches deep and it is 8.9 inches high. When it's assembled, you're looking at three inches wide and seven and a quarter inches deep, 8.9 inches high. It is made from stainless steel and it weighs three pounds. Coffee time, cheers everyone. Ah yeah. Folgers, funky Folgers for the win. Oh yeah, making my day good. All right, folks, so you guys have seen this stove in action. Some of you have seen this multiple times because I have done an overnight adventure with this stove. There is a common consensus amongst the viewers about this stove, and it's negative. Many viewers have referred to this as scrap metal. And, you know, the thing is, is like I kind of like where the company is going with this design, but they've made it overly complicated. It's overly heavy. It's overly engineered, you know? I think that's the issue. There's too much thought that's gone into this stove and they've made it too complicated. It's too much. When it comes to weight, it's way too heavy. Three pounds, this thing is substantially heavy. You will notice this inside of your backpack. You would not take this backpacking. You would not take this bushcrafting. You would take this car camping. And if you're going car camping, why take this stove? when there's other options out there. Talking about other options, there's a lot of wood stoves, wood volcano stoves on the market that are cheaper. Some match to this price, $120, but they also perform much, much better. They're also more satisfying to use than this one here. When it comes to wood stoves, there is an element of fun when it comes to like feeding the beast. That's what I call it. You take the wood, you put it in, and it continues to burn. I don't know, there's something about it that's kind of fun. I love doing it, my son loves doing it. Maybe you do too, I don't know. But with this stove here, you feed in from this ramp and you have to push it down through the tunnel. It's just, it's not much fun. And because of this design, it can take you a long time to get your fire going because with many other wood stoves, you simply take your match, you take your lighter, you light from the bottom, the heat rises, dries everything out, gets it going, and it really does work well. With this one here, your ignition goes through here, has to go down the body and then up the chimney. So it's an additional step and I think it does decrease the performance of this stove. Having to go down the body and then up the chute, I think it would perform better if it was just simply up the chute, right? Imagine how much lighter this would be if it didn't have the body at all but just had the stack, right? With some engineering, some thought, this would definitely be different, right? How often do you see a square body wood stove? something to think about. Since we're talking about weight, let's talk about construction. And when it comes to construction, thumbs up. It's very solid. It's also very heavy, right? And I think that leads to it feeling very solid because three pounds for this stove here. When talking about this stove being overly engineered, there's too much going on here. There's too many parts, too many components, too much that could get lost, right? You have the two wing nuts, you have the chute, the body, the stack, the legs, and another wing nut. That's quite a bit. And if you lose any of these pieces, this stove really just crumbles, 
right? In my opinion, I think a simpler design goes further, right? It's easier to use, it's easier to get it going, you don't have to worry about losing pieces and components. When you're speaking about all of these different components, it means it's complicated, right? You can't just pull this out of your backpack and use it. You have to take the time, set it all up. And for a number of people, they're not going to like that. For me personally, I don't like that. I don't want to have to take it out of my backpack and put it together, right? I just want to pull it out of my backpack and go, right? Because you already have to spend a good bit of time collecting your wood and your resources, right? Another negative for this stove here, because of the stainless steel is so thick, it's so heavy, it takes a long time for this to cool down. So, yeah, I mean, this has been empty of all embers for about 10 minutes and I can't really touch it. I couldn't hold on to this by any means. So it stays hot for a very, very long time. When it comes to starting your fires in this, you have to start here and essentially get the fire to move all the way up the body, through the body. That way it could come up and release out the chimney. So that additional step means that it takes longer to get going and it's less efficient. I hate to be so hard on this product, but the truth is I absolutely hate it. I do not like this stove one bit. I, I receive no enjoyment and I see no benefit from using it. And you know, I really appreciate that the company has such a passion for this stove, but I have to be honest, I just don't like it. I would not consider this stove for anything. I, I wouldn't take it car camping by any means. I wouldn't use it for bushcraft use. I definitely wouldn't take it backpacking. You could take it on a day hike, but it's three pounds. It's three pounds, right? So for me personally, there's just too many negatives. The cost is too high. Now, as you guys know, I oftentimes like to do a little bit of research about a product that I'm going to review. When I was looking at these reviews, the positive reviews seemed too glowing to me. So I did a little bit of digging into these reviews here. Now, um, one individual stated that he just absolutely loved this stove and that he can boil water in this stove here three minutes faster than he could in a gas stove. And I don't know what he's burning in that stove, but there's no way that it's faster than a gas stove. Not at all. <laughs> there's just no way. Uh, there's just no way that's possible. So I think with a lot of those reviews on Amazon, they are fake. There was also another review which I found very interesting and the company Hot Ash, they decided to use that review on their website. And let me read that to you. Size is great for backpacks and works awesome with my titanium cookware. That guy is using this stove with titanium cookware. So he's using like one of the heavier stoves on the market with a titanium pot. Doesn't that seem like an oxymoron? I don't know. I just found that review to be strange. I don't know. In the end, folks, all I can say, all that I can speak for is my own thoughts and opinions on this stove. This stove is made in the United States and I appreciate that fact. I appreciate the passion of the company, but that doesn't change the fact that, in my opinion, this is a poor stove. I do not like it. Too heavy, too expensive, too complicated, takes too long to get going, hard to start. I mean, the pro is that it's substantial, right? <laughs> it could probably take a bullet, I suppose. But outside of that, it's not the stove for me. Now, of course, folks, I'm interested to hear your thoughts about this. What do you guys think about this stove? Maybe you've used one, maybe you love it, maybe you disagree with me, comment down below, that's what it's all about. Maybe you agree with me. If so, comment down below. If you guys have any questions, you know what to do. I do want to say a big thank you to the Hot Ash Stove Company because they did send this in for me to test out. Sadly, I cannot recommend it. I cannot. Until next time, everybody, take care, strength and honor. Be well.